Hey guys, VBED here with another V Plays, and as requested, here is the J21RB, the Swedish Tier 8 multi role fighter that just popped in with the new European line. And as such, you're able to cross train it to multiple different nationalities. And for me, I went with the Americans because I wanted to throw Mary Loveheart on here because Mary Loveheart has the ability to use something called Valkyrie's Wrath, which allows her to be able to double the air to ground damage when she is in a dive with her rockets or bombs. We've also combined this with Demolition Expert and we put on the aerodynamic pylons in order to decrease the effect of the drag of the rockets because we're kind of needing that speed to get that Valkyrie strike to trigger and this aircraft has a little bit of an interesting gun configuration here. Uh, hi, Winged Avenger. Winged Avenger. I wasn't able to type to him immediately because I was in this ground attack run right here. But you carry four 50 cal machine guns and a single 20. And the 20 is mounted right on the tip of the nose. Uh, you do get a substantial amount of rockets, which is good considering how poorly I launched that last one. And a reload time at base of 60 seconds. I find that if you fire your guns like you're firing a 20, which is really just getting that 20 in the nose to make contact, the 50s will eventually fall into place. And I think I've said this many times before when you have a mixed gun loadout. Loadout is just treat the aircraft like it only has the largest caliber because that's the gun that you want to make contact. So as long as you can focus on making that happen, the other guns are going to be there to augment the damage once the target either gets close enough or it starts to level out its trajectory so you're either in a stern chase or a head-on. So allow yourself the ability to get maximum damage, right? And just train yourself to fly with a little bit more lead than usual. Uh, I found that the guns seem to overlap fairly well, although the 20 does have a slightly slower shell travel time from what I can tell. Uh, but again, I don't have any stats to verify that. Since it is a multi-roll, I am going to avoid overturning against uh, targets. But with that said, you're looking at an aircraft with some really good maneuverability. Uh, with the current configuration, we're looking at a 10.9 second turn time, which is really good for a multi-roll. We do have a specialist, two specialists on the enemy team, an RB-17 and a Horton 229. Actually, do I have another specialist? I know that there's an XP-58 on the enemy team as well, Stewie, which is a human player. I am getting into a bit of a dogfight with the Horton 229 here, but of course he is faster than me. And despite my best efforts, I'm having trouble getting guns on target. Here I lose sight of him, and this is just something to note about spotting mechanics. Where the heck did he go? He's gone. Oh, he just flew up from underneath me. I definitely don't want him to get around on me, so I'm trying my darndest to be able to get myself into a stern chase, so that way I can actually knock this guy out. I can outturn him, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be a very quick evolution, so you really need to... Pace yourself, pay attention, and the out-of-plane maneuvers, I think, may have put him at a bit of a disadvantage. Now, if he was to just continue on and do the standard up and over turn, like I mentioned many times before, he was actually getting away from me. But here, for whatever reason, he decides that he wants to take me around the rock because he really wants to take out me. I don't know why. Um, I'm not necessarily a huge force multiplier, especially not being a specialist. But we do end up taking him out, and... I'm finally able to respond and of course typos and then I send it to team chat of all things or flight chat. Why Why is flight chat even an option? Has anybody else been getting this where if I hit tab twice I end up in flight chat which doesn't make any sense to me because I'm clearly not in a flight. There's a few bugs I've noted with patch 2.1 and that's just one of them. Uh, the loading bug actually has been one I've been seeing happen to a lot of people and was happening to happening to me, but uh, it seemed to resolve itself with a computer restart. So if anybody seems to be having that issue. Uh, again, you'll note that these rockets were coming up pretty quick. We were able to use them on the first attack run that we went against that garrison right by spawn. And then we went for 
the other garrison that was right next to ours, right next to that garrison, and now we have those back again if we wanted to try and aid in capturing this zone as well. So as far as being that multi-role that's more of a zone flipper, this aircraft definitely has the capability to do just that. I'm trying to sneak a kill from these bots right here, but I don't even realize it that I have Jim Tom with the Sea Fang right behind me. So he's actually following right underneath me, I believe, right now. And I'm going to try and head to the zone that I think is going to be of most value. They do have the garrison down to the south, but the one that's over in the east is the one that I suspect that they're going to flip very quickly, and that's where my gravity of effort should be. I do see that there is a 269 down here, 265 rather, so I decide to dive on the target. And again, trying to get those 20s to make contact, and we're just not pulling enough lead there. We actually have the G-suit on this aircraft because I found that with machine gun fighters, uh, accuracy isn't necessarily that important because usually you're going to be using those guns much closer to the enemy. Getting a little bit of distance, we'll come back on them. I am being very aware of the other aircraft that are inbound to this zone because if I get fixated on this 265, I'm pretty much going to be done for. We were able to take out the 265, took more passes than I would have liked. Again, this is a tactic I usually advocate coming up from underneath aircraft. It kind of messes with the way people think. So this Horton 229 is definitely focusing on going after an aircraft at higher altitude and is otherwise engaged and we're able to consolidate our fire with some of our allies and be able to take him out very effectively. The Su-9 that was chasing me I know has really poor stall characteristics and altitude performance so we were able to knock him out fairly easily after he lost energy and just started falling out of the sky right underneath us. And now we're coming back and trying to aid our ally here in the BF-109G. Got a fire lit on him. And we managed to take out the target and we were able to secure the Lambert medal. Now there is an XP-58 that is Stewie and is specialized. So we're getting guns on target here. And we just locked in Conqueror. Looks like the Horton 229 is back. And I really want to get this guy. He seems like he's going after a ground attacker and I may have an opportunity to hunt him down. Oh, he's turning towards me. Let's see if we can rocket him in the face. We are both over committing and it was a collision. I don't really like colliding. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of ramming people if I can avoid it. I would have been safer if at the last second I would have rolled the aircraft to do a wing strike to possibly just limit the damage to my aircraft, but uh, unfortunately none of the rockets made connections. So we'll follow Jim Tom around in his Sea Fang, and I made a comment during the 2.1 video that I prefer the J21RD to, or RB rather, to the Sea Fang. Um, and that doesn't mean that the Sea Fang isn't still a very solid platform because it really is. It does have strong maneuverability. It has 20 millimeter cannons, which makes it a much more viable air killer than the J21 is. But uh, on top of that, it still carries fairly decent air to ground munitions and has decent altitude performance with the engine power that comes with it. So don't think that just because you have a Sea Fang that it's no longer viable compared to a J21 or at least obsolete because the J21 is just a different airframe that relies more on the air to ground capabilities while sporting similar maneuverability characteristics. So just something to bear in mind. A solid battle for us with 12,000 personal points. Let's go ahead and get back to the hangar and take a look at the end game results and talk about the setup we're utilizing on this airframe. All right, so here we are, we're back. J21RB, we ended up making a pretty decent chunk of credits. We did fairly well in this battle, but I've been averaging about nine, 10 K personal points in this. And I'm not sure if it's just me or if I'm having some hiccups lately. But air to ground damage wasn't as substantial as you would think. Uh, 27,000 isn't bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, but we only destroyed four ground targets and only got 180 capture points while 
attacking. The 500 capture points you see marked right here is a combination of the attacking as well as 320 for defending. And we managed to kill 11 aircraft and we did quite a bit of critical damage here. You can actually see we had a few fires and the combination of the 20 and 450 cal machine guns allows you to be able to get a surprising amount of damage off very quickly if you prioritize using the 20 and then let the 50s kind of fall as they may as you're closing on the target you're going to end up faring pretty well the way that this aircraft plays in my mind is much like an f-84 would just at tier 8. Uh, i think a lot of people that end up going down the f-84 line uh, find that once you get to the XP-72, it feels a little bit out of place. Feels a little out of place. I mean, it's the same type of thing, right? You're getting machine guns. You know, it's a big jug of a plane. It gets rockets and bombs, but it just feels underperforming. And I think some of that might be attributed to the fact that it's still a prop-driven aircraft. While you have a jet here that still gets a very robust air-to-ground capability with these rockets. And even though it's not the same volume of rockets, you are going to have a 60 second reload at base, which allows you to be able to get those up and running even faster. And then a similar gun behavior. Uh, I know there's a single 20 on there and I just said prioritize using the 20, but usually they're gonna be, you're gonna be within about 2000 feet, uh, which is going to mean that the 50 cals are also going to be in range typically. So you're going to fly this thing and dogfight in the same type of way that you would with an F-84. Because in an XP-72, you don't have the same type of maneuverability you do with this. This has a 10.9 second turn time with the current configuration we have. And this is with a pilot that is set up primarily for doing air to ground, right? As a result, you're going to find yourself um, limited on your maneuverability side of the house but with that said it feels very familiar and I, I do definitely feel that it's reminiscent of this guy with a fairly well a very robust air to ground rocket capability but then when you look at this airframe you're also going to see that it too has pretty substantial rocket power so anyways that's why i throw my f-84 pilot in here it could behave totally differently for you if you decide to set it up in a different way, run it with a different pilot, make it a different nationality, strip the rockets off. I'm sure it'll behave in a much different way for you as well. Uh, there's not much you can do about the altitude performance. You're still going to kind of be in that regime, right, of about 5,000 feet uh, before you start sacrificing a lot of your engine power but the climb rate on this is really good solid acceleration 487 feet per second it's going to give you the ability to skyrocket past that max optimum altitude i do like the look of it although when you look at it from the top down the engine seems quite bulbous in the back here but a weird combination of kind of the p38 style nose especially with the face on here and then in concert with the tail configuration with a pusher jet engine uh well all jet engines are pushers right it's pretty much a vampire f1 kind of a configuration it doesn't disappoint i've been having a really good time flying it i think it may take a little bit of nuance to be able to do it really well but i've been having a good time which means i'm getting more experience for this pilot and therefore i'm also getting a lot of credits as a byproduct since it's a premium so i've got no real complaints uh, and since you can cross train this to any nationality it means that you essentially have a crew trainer for every single nation so if you're looking for a tier 8 that isn't the nc 1070 as a crew trainer now you have an aircraft that can be used for all of your fighters or heavies or maybe even your multi-rolls and pseudo ground attackers so you know it's up to you uh, very versatile i guess that's kind of my bottom line here Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the down and dirty review on the J21RB. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.